In this section, Napoleon Hill talks about how your thoughts can truly help you achieve whatever you want. He describes the story of Edwin Barnes, a man who had a burning desire to become a business associate of the great Edison. But two difficulties stood in his way. He did not know Mr. Edison and he did not have enough money to pay his railroad fare to Orange, New Jersey. Barnes decided to travel by freight train and presented himself at Mr. Edison's laboratory. Barnes did not get his partnership with Edison but did get a chance to work in the Edison offices, at a very nominal wage, doing work that was unimportant to Edison, but most important to Barnes. Months went by. Apparently, nothing happened. When the opportunity came, it appeared in a different form and from a different direction than Barnes had expected. That is one of the tricks of opportunity. Mr. Edison's newly invented the dictating machine had not enthused his salesman, but Barnes sold it so successfully that Edison gave him a contract to distribute and market it all over the nation. Out of that business association, grew the slogan, made by Edison and installed by Barnes. Barnes literally thought himself into a partnership with the great Edison. Hill also stresses on the importance of learning through failures by sharing the story of Mr. Darby who quit because he failed to mine gold. Darby was convinced that he could make money and though he struck gold, he realized that it had simply vanished. After several unsuccessful attempts, he finally gave up and sold all his equipment to a man who collected junk. Unfortunately for Darby, the man he sold the equipment to found gold only after digging about three feet more into the ground. Many people taste failure because they quit as soon as they experience temporary defeats. Since we are all guilty of this at one time or another, it's imperative to understand that one should be determined and try harder, no matter how many times he or she experiences adversities. The way to become successful is to know what you want to achieve. Without clear goals, we cannot start our journey towards success. If you hope to become rich, you should be defining how much money you want to earn by a certain age. Monetary and time-specific goals will allow you to have a clear understanding of how much you will have to invest to accomplish this goal. After identifying a goal and giving it a time frame, you will then want to outline a plan. This plan should incorporate a step-by-step -step approach to attaining your final goal. Once you have this plan, you need to act. Start straight away and do not waste a minute. These recommendations will help keep you motivated and focused on the next goal you need to focus on to obtain your overall goal. According to Napoleon, individuals who have an unwavering faith are generally those who will do whatever it takes to achieve their goals. Napoleon gives the example of Mahatma Gandhi to support the power of faith and self-confidence. Gandhi did not have access to the typical instruments of power, money and the military. Instead, he had an unwavering belief that he could lead his country, India, to freedom from British colonial rule. This belief allowed him to develop a significant influence over his fellow countrymen and subsequently spark a change. Fix in your mind the exact amount of money or type of job you desire. There is a psychological reason for definiteness. Determine exactly what you intend to give in return for the money you desire. There is no such reality as something for nothing. Establish a definite date when you intend to possess the money you desire. Create a definite plan for carrying out your desire and begin at once whether you are ready or not, to put this plan into action. Write out a clear, concise statement containing all the above details. Read your written statement aloud, twice daily, once just before retiring at night and once after arising in the morning. As you read, see and feel and believe yourself already in possession of the money. We succeed when we establish a definite purpose and then place all our energy into achieving that goal. If you do not see great riches in your imagination, you will never see them in your bank balance. All achievement begins with a burning desire for something definite, and a willingness to get up and keep at it. Faith is what Napoleon Hill calls an eternal elixir which gives life, power and action to the impulse of thought. Your own success or failure is based largely on your self-belief, and a mindset of positive expectancy is the foundation of which your success can be achieved. Faith is the starting point of success and the glue that holds it all together. Faith can be induced or created by encouraging positive emotions and eliminating negative emotions, such as doubt, denial, and fear. By believing in yourself, others will believe in you too. Employers seek successful, confident people who can make a positive impact. Find examples of people who are where you want to be, career, money, influence-wise, you name it. Use their examples as a way to keep your faith strong, and remind yourself that your desire is possible to attain. 
you can also spend at least 30 minutes on your thoughts every day to inch closer to success because your positive thoughts are extremely powerful and can influence you to tread in the right direction. One needs to write down their goals and purpose in life while utilizing auto-suggestion for at least 10 minutes to strengthen self-confidence. A man who has the will and thinks that he can win, will win. Conduct yourself just as you would if you were already in possession of the material thing which you are demanding. The subconscious mind will transmute into its physical equivalent. There are no limitations to the mind except those we acknowledge. Both poverty and riches are the offsprings of thought. A mind that is dominated by positive emotions is a much better place for fostering faith. We must feed our subconscious mind with positive emotions and optimism. Faith transforms your ordinary thoughts into a spiritual force, which powers your communion with infinite intelligence. To summon faith in the form of self-confidence, the author suggests that you sign your name to a statement, which you should be repeating daily towards subconsciously influencing your thoughts and actions. This statement should include affirmations that acknowledge certain things about yourself. That you promise to take action. That you have the ability to achieve your purpose. That you will never stop trying to achieve your goals. That you understand the importance of self-confidence and promise to spend 10 minutes a day working on this. That you are willing to serve others, and in turn will get others to serve you. That you promise to dedicate time to ensuring that these thoughts become real. That you understand that your thoughts will gradually transform into a physical reality. No thought, whether it be negative or positive, can enter the subconscious mind without the aid of the principle of autosuggestion, except for thoughts picked up from the ether. Our ability to use the principle of autosuggestion will depend, very largely, upon your capacity to concentrate upon a given desire until that desire becomes a burning obsession, and until we can actually see the physical appearance of the money. Do this at least once each day with the belief that the subconscious mind must hand over to your practical plans for acquiring the money which is yours. When visualizing the money, we intend to accumulate, with closed eyes, we must see ourselves rendering the service, or delivering the merchandise you intend to give in return for this money. This is important. The key point is we have absolute control over what we pass to our subconscious mind. We can convince ourselves of our success, or failure, through mental reinforcement. Through routine repetition of our conscious thoughts and desires to ourselves, we can regain absolute control over the material which reaches our subconscious mind, exercising control over our decisions, feelings, and actions. Now that you've written down a statement and are working on a plan to achieve the money you need, you simply need to train your subconscious to attain success. In order to instruct yourself, sit in a peaceful area and read your statement while visualizing and believing that you're already in possession of that money. Decide the sort of specialized knowledge you require and the purpose for which it is needed. Successful people never stop acquiring specialized knowledge related to their major purpose, business, or profession. The knowledge acquiring period does not end with school. The truth is that schooling does but little more than to put one in the way of learning how to acquire practical knowledge. Knowledge is only potential power. It becomes power only when, and if, it is organized into definite plans of action, and directed to a definite end. The person who stops studying merely because he has finished school is forever hopelessly doomed to mediocrity, no matter what may be his calling. The way of success is the way of continuous pursuit of knowledge. Never stop learning and focus that continuous learning on useful and organized knowledge. Hill differentiates specialized knowledge, knowledge organized and used for action, from general knowledge, knowledge that's not organized and used for action, essentially just trivia. Specialized knowledge can help you to become wealthy, whereas general knowledge is useless. Courses, seminars, books, or summaries, industry conferences, they all improve your odds of acquiring the much-needed specialized knowledge for yourself. Lifelong learning is obviously necessary for an ambitious person to keep up with all the latest developments in their field. Knowledge will fail to pull in money if it isn't organized and tested with practical plans. The application of knowledge for the benefit of society is what is important. You can always seek knowledge through public libraries, training courses, universities, colleges and practical experiences. Many years ago, an old country doctor drove to a drug store and spoke to the store clerk. Then the doctor went out to the buggy and fetched a large, old-fashioned kettle and deposited them in the back of the store. The clerk inspected the kettle and handed over a roll of bills to the doctor. The roll contained exactly $500, the clerk's entire savings. The doctor also presented a small slip of paper on which was written a secret formula. 
the clerk had actually purchased an idea. The strange performance of the kettle began to take place after the new owner mixed with the secret instructions an ingredient of which the doctor knew nothing. The old kettle is now one of the world's largest consumers of sugar in millions of glass bottles, employing an army of men and women all over the world. The mysterious ingredient the drug clerk, Asa Candler, mixed with the secret formula was, imagination, and the content of the enchanted kettle was a world-famous drink. For years, Coca-Cola has created thousands of opportunities for people all over the world, but it's astounding to know that it was created with just an idea. There are two types of imaginations. Synthetic imagination through this faculty, one may arrange old concepts, ideas, or plans into new combinations. This is the faculty which we use more often to convert desire into money. Creative imagination through the faculty, our finite mind has direct communication with infinite intelligence. The creative imagination becomes more alert by stimulating the conscious mind. In other words, action breeds ideas like flexing a muscle stimulates growth. Hale suggests centering your focus on your synthetic imagination first, as you will use it much more often. The stimulation from the other principles will help foster heightened creative imagination. Whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve. If you want to attract abundance, start with an idea. To make the best use of your imagination towards achieving your big goal, come up with a list of ideas that will both inspire you and allow you to best utilize your talents. When you decide to take a road trip, the first thing you do is put your destination into the navigator system. Perhaps you'll consult a map and decide on a route to follow to reach your destination. Having a well-defined plan of how to achieve your goals is just as important as knowing what roads to take on your drive. But just like on a road trip, Sometimes you'll take a wrong turn and deviate from the right path. That's why it's important not just to make a plan before you begin, but also to course correct when things go wrong. The sooner you course correct, the faster you reach your goal. No individual has enough experience, education, native ability and knowledge to ensure the accumulation of a great fortune without the cooperation of other people. Ally yourself with a group of as many people as you may need for the creation and carrying out of your plan, making use of the mastermind principle. Decide what advantages and benefits you may offer the individual members of your group, in return for their cooperation. Arrange to meet with the members of your mastermind group at least twice a week. Maintain perfect harmony between yourself and every member of your mastermind group. When you begin to select members for your mastermind group, endeavor to select those who do not take defeat seriously. A quitter never wins, and, a winner never quits. Lincoln's decision to issue his famous proclamation of emancipation, which give freedom to the colored people of America, cost him his life eventually. That required courage. Socrates' decision to drink the cup of poison rather than compromise in his personal belief, was a decision of courage. Definiteness of decision always requires courage, sometimes very great courage. Let one of our first decisions be to keep a closed mouth and open ears and eyes. Don't reveal your plans to the world before you've done anything. The chances are that someone else will beat you to it. Don't be influenced by others' opinions, except those within your mastermind group. The most momentous decisions usually assume greater risk. What separates leaders is their ability to take such decisions quickly and firmly. Take definite, firm decisions. Change your mind only if more detailed consideration suggests it is warranted. People without a clearly defined purpose procrastinate and put off achieving their goals because you can't hit a target you can't even see. Instead of making vague wishes, Napoleon Hill recommends that you make a conscious decision to aim for that target. The importance of avoiding procrastination and making critical decisions. The primary reason for failure among most people is procrastination. In order to be successful, it's highly crucial that you take action immediately, rather than procrastinating and speculating about it to no end. The people who think too much and waste time before making important decisions and rely upon the judgments or opinions of others rarely succeed. During the Depression, W. C. Fields, the comedian lost all his money and found himself without income. Moreover, he was past 60, when many men consider themselves old. But he was so eager to stage a comeback that he offered to work without pay, in a new field, movies. In addition to his other troubles, he fell and injured his neck. To many that would have been the place to give up and quit. But Fields was persistent. He knew that if he carried on, he would get the break sooner or later, and he did get them. Another great example of persistence can be learned from the legendary Bruce Lee who captured millions of hearts all over the world. 
He was chosen for a movie, but was very disappointed when the role was given to another actor. However, he didn't give up and sought new roles even when he had to struggle. Thomas Edison. Do people even try after failing 10 times, never mind 10,000 times? Persistence is an essential factor in the procedure of transmuting desire into its monetary equivalent. The basis of persistence is the power of will. The symptom of lack of persistence is a fear of criticism. Most people permit relatives, friends, and the public at large to so influence them that they cannot live their own lives because they fear criticism. The fear of criticism in such cases is stronger than the desire for success. Once we decide with definiteness of purpose, we must persist. Four Simple Steps to Develop Persistence A definite purpose backed by a burning desire for its fulfillment. A definite plan, expressed in continuous action. A mind closed tightly against all negative and discouraging influences, including negative suggestions of relatives, friends, and acquaintances. A friendly alliance with one or more persons who will encourage one to follow through with both plan and purpose. The basis of persistence is the power of will, and it's also influenced by other factors, such as Definiteness of purpose Self-reliance Definiteness of plans Accurate knowledge Cooperation Habits Which of the aforementioned factors are you lacking, which might be hindering your persistence? On the contrary, lack of persistence begets the following symptoms. Procrastination Lack of interest Indecision Self-satisfaction Indifference Weakness of desire Willingness to quit Lack of organized plans Wishing instead of willing Searching for shortcuts Fear of criticism. So, how to develop persistence? Well, first off, your willpower acts as a bane to develop persistence and when it's combined with desire, it becomes an unstoppable combination. The mastermind may be defined as, coordination of knowledge and effort, in a spirit of harmony, between two or more people, for the attainment of a definite purpose. There are two characteristics of the mastermind principle. Economic phase created by any person who surrounds himself with the advice, counsel, and personal cooperation of a group of men who are willing to lend him wholehearted aid, in a spirit of perfect harmony. This form of cooperative alliance has been the basis of nearly every great fortune. Psychic phase This is much more abstract, and much more difficult to comprehend. We may catch a significant suggestion from this statement, no two minds ever come together without, thereby, creating a third, invisible intangible force which may be likened to a third mind. Anybody can wish for riches, and most people do. But only a few know that a definite plan, plus a burning desire for wealth are the only dependable means of accumulating wealth. Planning and persistence can be useless, however, without power to translate them into action. A collection of brains, Hill argues, creates a bigger set of thoughts, propelling us forward with a shared and definite purpose and an organized plan. This is the essence of organized knowledge. Form an alliance of organized knowledge with a shared purpose. Napoleon Hill recommends creating a mastermind with other talented entrepreneurs so that you can work on problems together. Almost all great achievement is the result of a group of dedicated individuals working together. The goal of a mastermind is to convert knowledge into power, by organizing it into definite plans, and then translating plans into action. Sex transmutation means switching the mind from physical thoughts to thoughts of some other nature. Sex desire is the most powerful desire and when redirected to other areas it can be a powerful creative force. When driven by this emotion, men become gifted with a superpower for action. According to Hill, those with historically great creative faculties were highly sexed. They knew how to turn sexual desire into energy for creativity. One of Hill's key arguments for this idea is that he observed thousands of people, and the truly outstanding achievers almost always did achieve great things after the age of 40. He suggests few succeed before then because of their tendency to dissipate their energies on the emotion of sex. The subconscious mind consists of a field of consciousness in which every impulse of thought that reaches the objective mind through any of the five senses is classified and recorded and from which thoughts may be recalled or withdrawn as letters may be taken from a filing cabinet. Through a method unknown to us, the subconscious mind draws upon the forces of infinite intelligence for the power with which it transmutes one's desires into their physical equivalent, making use, always, of the most practical media by which this end may be accomplished. We cannot entirely control your subconscious mind, 
but we may voluntarily plant in it any plan, thought, or purpose which we desire to translate into its physical or monetary equivalent. We must speak its language, or it will not heed our call. Hill suggests we can harness this power by mastering the seven most powerful emotions. Desire. Faith. Love. Enthusiasm. Romance. Hope. Sex. We must avoid the seven major negative emotions. Fear. Jealousy. Revenge. Anger. Hatred. Superstition. Greed. The mere presence of a single negative emotion in your conscious mind might be sufficient to destroy all chances of constructive aid from your subconscious mind. Forming the habit of only permitting positive thoughts to enter your conscious mind, in turn, feeds the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is the connecting link between the finite mind of humans and infinite intelligence. Hill asserts that the brain is similar to a radio. Just like a radio, your brain operates at specific set frequencies. In the case of your brain, these frequencies are emotions, love, hate, despair, fear, confidence, and more. Radio can only provide sound when the transmitter and receiver are set to the same frequency. In the same way, if you want your brain to provide wealth, then you have to make sure that your emotions reflect that frequency. If your brain is set to a frequency of despair and poverty, then that is all that you will be able to manifest via the infinite intelligence, because that's the only signal that the infinite intelligence sends that you will be able to pick up. But when you set your brain to a frequency of love, confidence, and feeling abundant, then you will naturally manifest those things. When we adjust our mental frequency, we have the ability to communicate, not just from one finite brain to another, but to the mind of infinite intelligence as well. Every human brain is both a broadcasting and receiving station for the vibration of thought. The subconscious mind is the sending station of the brain, through which vibrations of thought are broadcast. The creative imagination is the receiving set, through which the vibrations of thought are picked up from the ether. When stimulated, stepped up, to a high rate of vibration, the mind becomes more receptive to the vibration of thought. This stepping up takes place through positive or negative emotions. Vibrations of an exceedingly high rate are the only vibrations picked up and carried, by the ether, from one brain to another. The concept of sixth sense is the apex of philosophy, and through it, we are warned of impending dangers in time to avoid them and notified of opportunities in time to embrace them. Understanding of the sixth sense comes only through meditation and mental development from within. The sixth sense can only be understood and applied by first mastering the other twelve principles. Through this mastery, the sixth sense can warn us of impending dangers and notify us of opportunities in advance. But the sixth sense cannot function in the face of indecision. Doubt and fear. Those filled with fear not only limit their own progress, but also transmit these destructive vibrations to others. The six basic fears are the fears of poverty, criticism, ill health, loss of love of someone, old age, and death. The key to overcoming these fears is recognizing that fear is just a state of mind, and that one's state of mind can be controlled and directed. To protect yourself from such negative influences, put your willpower into constant use until you build immunity against negative influences in your own mind. Deliberately seek the company of people who influence you to think and act from a positive standpoint. Use your willpower to gain control over your thoughts and influence your subconscious mind. Fear is just a state of mind. It is subject to control and direction. Use this knowledge to your advantage. The understanding of the sixth sense comes only by meditation, through mind development from within. Once you've mastered the sixth sense, you will be able to receive warnings about impending dangers in time to avoid them and get notified of opportunities in time to embrace them.